What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Opus 12 set review. We're doing wind this time, and as per usual, I'm joined by Travis Pfeiffer. What's going on? Alex, thanks for having me here, man. Always a pleasure to uh, talk about some new sets. Feels really good to get back into this. You know what? I'm so excited. I think we should just start off with a legend card, just to really get things going. Yeah, and and we asked Square Enix to order the the set this way. It's not a coincidence. We do. So yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. they totally listen to our opinion on this. Yeah, we got a lot of pull, a lot of pull in the, in the FFTCG community. So, <laughs> all right. First up is Ash, and that is. Uh, that's right, she's in a new color, 2 CP, wind forward, 5K power, uh, category 12 job princess, which is a good job to have. Uh, and uh, she reads, if you control six or more characters, Ash gains 2000 power and Ash cannot be chosen by your opponent's abilities. And then at the end of each of your turns, if you have cast three or more cards this turn, draw one card. Um, so I think that, you know, just at that base level with that first effect, you're always going to have it in mono wind and you're always going to have it in water wind uh, because you play your five backups so you can work with Diabolos and all of your other activation shenanigans. So uh, a 7k can't be chosen. That's really nice. And, and wind has a bunch of other cards that do that as well. So you could build your little untargetable party if you wanted to. Um, so, so I do like that. So far, so good. And then the the second effect, if you've cast three or more cards this turn, draw one card. So the turn she's played, she could be one of those cards, and then that's probably your most likely turn uh, to um, to draw. And then after that, I don't know, like it depends. There's, It's definitely doable in, in both those decks that I mentioned, because you have Diabolos, is going to be a free cast. Uh, you could play something like, you know, Bart's Diabolos, Vada, and then boom, you draw a card. Like that's pretty sweet. There's there's definitely ways to use this. So I think it's gonna be attempted um, and we'll see if it's truly viable or not. I love the artwork. Uh, what I don't love is the card. So it actually, I didn't realize this was a legend when I first saw it. I was like, so where's the wind legend? And someone's like, well, it was Ash. I was like, what? <laughs> no, it wasn't. And I went back, I was like, oh, it's just like a common. And I read, I was like, oh, this is the legend. Uh, so her first effect, I, I agree, you're probably almost always going to have that live. Keep in mind, it only prevents her from being chosen by abilities, not mm -hmm. summons. So they can still use summons to beat her up. Um, and ultimately, even with that, she's just going to be 7k, so it's not like she's going to be this overwhelming threat. As far as the draw thing goes, this one I'll, I'll just kind of have to see how, how relevant this whole casting mechanic is that they're putting into this opus. That, you know, no, you cast so many cards and then you get an extra effect. Um, because three... And like you said, there is an example where three could be done relatively easily, but there's also a time where three could be a lot of cards to cast. The other thing I don't like about that is that it's at the end of the turn, and there's a monster called Librarian where at the end of each of those turns it would pull a card back to your hand. But when I tested that monster out, an issue I ran into a lot was I would have a full-sized grip at the end of the turn. So which means if you get that, you're now over the hand limit, so you now have, you have to discard because you're already in the end phase, you can't play anything else. So, I don't know. I'm just not really sold on that. I'd love to be proven wrong. Maybe she'll show up all the time and it's like, wow, they're just getting all this free value off of her. But just reading her, I, I don't know. I'm not sold. Yeah, I, I hope that she does work out. I think she's easy enough to uh, to get that effect. If you even get it off once, you're, you're kind of netting some value. And I, I, I guess I think something that maybe I, I just value that can't be chosen by abilities higher like i just i think that's really powerful and i think if you have that and like zidane and like ranger or something then there's so many etbs that can't target you that uh you can make your opponents uh, uh have a hard time for sure yeah that is true okay uh we've got another princess this is althea she is a three cp backup job princess category final fantasy crystal chronicles man is nor stalin like the best backup searcher in the game or what it just gets more and more cards every opus it can keep searching uh she looks really cute though i like it so when althea enters the field choose one character other than althea you control activate it action ability is you just dull her choose one character other than althea you control return it and althea to their owner's hand when I first read this card, I, I don't know, I was kind of like, oh, it's like soft Mione, like, you know, it's kind of your typical wind stuff. But the more I look at this, the more I'm like, whoa, 
I think this card's even better than maybe it first reads. So because you can activate a character when she comes in, if you need to, you can activate a key forward, or if you just activate a backup, it means she's always going to be one CP cheaper. So you can essentially always think of her as like two for that. Um, and then that action ability, again, as I was reading this, what really stands out to me about this is that normally you would expect this to be limited to your turn. And we're going to see some cards mm -hmm. coming up that have these weird restrictions. This is any time. So you can block with a forward and then bounce it back to your hand to protect it. You know, now she's going to come up as well, which normally that would feel expensive. Like, oh, I've got this three CP I've got to replay. But as we saw with Chalinka last Opus, you kind of want to replay it. And because she's always going to, again, you can always make her cheaper by having her reactivate one of the backups you use to play her. I don't think that's going to feel so bad. So the fact that it's at any time you can just bounce something back to your hand. And we know how strong that can be for your own cards with things like Mione. You know, think of your Zadon in Wind now. You can have your Zadon block. He's blocked an attack, bounced him back to your hand, which means he's coming back in to do his entry effect. Like, the more I read her, the more I'm starting to think this card's really good. Yeah, I also really like that it's a um, replaceable backup slot. So, um, and you get that that CP back in hand. So normally, like when you clear a backup, which is hard to do and win sometimes, there's a lot of sticky backups. Um, you have to break a backup and it's gone, and you've lost like your CP. But now you gain two CP to hand, even if you don't plan to replay her. So I actually think she's really good. We just have to see. Um, how tricky that initial investment is because sometimes the activating a character like it's it's kind of awkward but like I think for the most part like it will work out like I think she's going to be a good a good, um, a good uh, card I think I'm going to see someone play this in wind water where they're like pain reactivate the backups uh, Mione to bounce the pain to replay the plane you know Althea bounce the Mione to bounce the pain and blah, 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 blah. And then my head just explodes. Well, that explosion was them uh, decking themselves out accidentally right, and, yeah, exactly. and Travis winning <laughs> winning the match. Yeah, exactly. So. They've got 15 cards in hand and go, okay, that was my turn. I lose. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, she'll definitely help you in that context draw some cards off of Ash. Uh, and if yeah. you're going to draw, if you can play, if you can cast three cards, it means you pay CP for them, of course. Uh, if you can cast three cards in one turn, why not cast four cards in one turn with Alexander being the fourth? Uh, if you do that, you get to draw two more cards. It's incredible. It's amazing. It's just okay. It's not that good to summon. It's not. Dude, this has an EX burst. Can you ever resolve the two card draw on an EX burst? That means you have to cast four things yeah. on your opponent's turn. They then still have to hit you. So somehow you casting four cards didn't like stop it. Like... That, oh. So EX burst wise, you're never going to get two cards off of this. It's almost um, like a big F you that they put an EX burst on that card. Right? Like it's, I mean, yes, you can I trigger EX bursts draw. on your, I mean, you could have like a, this could be like a, um, uh, a Fusia burst or something, but like still, like it's, it's just really funny to me. Let's go, let's yeah, move on. <laughs> sure. All right. Next we've got Enkidu. Enkidu is a first time appearing in TCG. 3 CP forward, 7,000 power, job warrior. Category Theater Rhythm, Category 5. When Enkidu enters the field or attacks, deal 1,000 damage to all the forwards opponent controls. Then it has a special called Hurricane, which is just the price of one other Enkidu. You choose a forward and deal it damage equal to its power minus 1,000. So he's kind of like, almost like a version of like Barbarisha and like a Diabolos ping or, or, or a semi Lafina ping all wrapped in one. You can drop him on the field and then whether it's that turn he came in or when he attacks, you can just hit the hurricane and boom, you've taken out a forward because you ping it and then, um, and he'll play well with the Gilgamesh card. We'll see later. Yeah, I really like him. I, I think he's really neat. I like that the hurricane is so cheap and it just kind of plays with itself. I don't know how much you would ever run this without Gilgamesh. I feel like you're, you're going to kind of play those two together. But again, that the fact that he's kind of like a self-contained Barbarisha, if you want to pay for the special, I like that about him. But you probably won't see him without Gilgamesh. Yeah, I, I think people will experiment with him without Gilgamesh. But then if you're playing him, you might just play Chalinka instead. Although he's good because he trades up. Like he trades yeah. up on attack. So like he's actually pretty good. Like this would have been... An opus like one or two hero without Gilgamesh, and we would have been like, "Oh, I'll play this card." Uh, but now, uh, and just so you guys know, we're not going to go over Gilgamesh, but Gilgamesh taps to play him from your deck, uh, Dull. So um, 
with with Gilgamesh, you could tap Gilgamesh when you have an Enkidu in hand to take one out of your deck, put it on the field dull, one K to the board. The one in ha hand uses Hurricane, uh, pays for the Hurricane, uh, and it, it allows you to um, pull off the combo without actually having to pay the three CP to get Enkidu on the board, which will make it much, much more reliable, which is why uh, Travis is saying that you're going to play this with Gilgamesh. <laughs> uh, and Travis and I both pulled Gilgamesh in our pre-release kits, um, so you're going to, you know, you're probably going to hear about it from us at some point. For sure. Okay, next we have Dancer, which is a 3 CP 7k Wind Forward standard unit. Uh, job 14. Uh, Dull, deal 1000 damage to all Forward's opponent controls. If you co control 7 or more Wind characters, deal 4000 damage instead. Uh, that's a really cool like effect to have. But, and it, it's nice that you can control your characters. If it was 6, then this might actually be really interesting because then, you know, like Fina and this doesn't yeah. seem that out of the realm of possibility um but people can interrupt it with removal which makes it really tricky uh but if you have five backups you have dancer out and you play a fina that's your seventh wind character right there and then you doll the dancer for 4k i mean that's pretty good um but it's just too tricky on a forward i think yeah, 4k board damage is nothing to sneeze at, so I'll give it a try in yeah. mono win, but like you said, she's got a way to turn before she can dull herself, so chances are it ultimately will be difficult to get off. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, next we have our monster in wind. This is a cactar, uh, 1 CP monster, category crystal hunt, job cactar, of course, yeah. Bang! and multi-playable so like all the monsters this set he has a double effect which says when he enters the field you can select one of the following two actions he can either become a permanent forward with 4000 power or you can put him into the break zone when you do so you choose one forward your opponent reveals the top card of their deck if the revealed card is cost three or less deal it 1000 needles 1000 damage if the revealed card's cost is four or more you're casting 10,000 needles and you're dealing it 10,000 damage now, in a vacuum, 1 CP for 10,000 damage is insane. So if you could guarantee that, maybe that would be worth it. But if you go to target something and it just pings it for one, and again, it's your opponent's deck, so there's just there's a card coming up in water that will mess with this. But for the most part, there's nothing that will let you know how that's going to work unless they've like already revealed the card. So again, it's kind of like all these monsters, it's got like this potential summon implication, but you can only do it on your turn. But unlike the other ones, too, all the other ones have, like, a set thing they do. This one is just such a high roll. Like, he's cute. I love the art, but that's just... I just don't see why you would try it. It's too risky. Here's here's how I'm going to spin this card for you, okay? And we'll see if you like okay. it after, okay? Okay. Uh, you run this in a deck that is looking for that 1k damage, just like you would with the regular Cactar. So you play this on a turn that you want to combo it with Barbaricia or Diabolus or something, okay? Uh, okay? And then, if it hits the 10k, you don't use your combo piece, you get to keep it for later and you still have that in your hand. And if it doesn't hit the 10k, then you just carry out your combo like you were planning. Does that, does that spice it up at all? That is a good point. You know, if again, if you're thinking of it like the other Cactar and you just want that 1k, now granted that other Cactar is reusable yes. every turn, but... Yeah, that, that does give it some more value, I think. I think I think it's because it's like if you're yeah, it's tough because there's there, there's so much there's so much high cost cards in the, in the game right now that it makes me want to try this um, because of the upside and and uh, I think ultimately if you're going to run a cactar you're going to run the the uh, the old one but uh, I do think it's cool like if you don't go into this hoping for the 10k go into it with your backup plan and then if you get the 10k then you're good and and that's could be a fun way to, to play with it yeah I will say if you do try this card out you're going to have a great time when you yeah. get that 10k hit you're going to be like Woo oh <laughs> yeah Okay, uh, next up we have White Mage, which is a uh, two CP standard unit win backup uh, category special, and uh, she has an effect when White Mage enters the field, choose up to three backups you control. If you have cast three or more cards this turn, activate them. So again, we're getting this this uh, cast in one turn effect. I think some people were were having some speculation about how, like, if you go second, you can play 
two backups, play this as your third backup, um, activate all three of them, and then you've got like three CP. Uh, that's pretty high rolly. Um, North Stalin makes it more doable because then you only need her and North Stalin in your opening hand. Um, but then you need a card to play. I, I don't know, like it's, and you have to go second. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. That is a lot. Yeah, I don't really like this card. I like the artwork. Yeah. People are trying to sell me on this. Because, like, again, like you said, oh, but if you do this and this, then no, you play it's... her, and then boom, it's for free. But then again, okay, but even in that scenario, okay, but now what do you do with that CP you just got back? Because you probably don't have any more cards to play because you pitched them all to get these out. Okay, so now you just have free backups. I mean, don't be wrong, you're set up really well, but yeah. it's not like you have anything to then use it on. And just there's so many win cards already that like reactivate backups, like backup Aerith and things that I don't know. I'd be happy to be proved wrong about this, but just looking at it, other than the artwork, I'm just like... Hey. Yeah, the ar the artwork, I, f I feel like she looks like a hot mom. Like, am I wrong on right? that? Yeah. No, absolutely. That's the vibe I'm getting for sure. Uh, okay, uh, very cool little um, rare combo set coming up here. Yeah, this is one of those things that, again, wasn't spoiled early, so we only knew about when the full set came out. And this, there's always kind of like a card in every opus that comes out like that. And this is one of those ones that really got people talking. So this is Shikari X. It's a 2CP, 5,000 power forward from Final Fantasy XI. Um, job Sin Hunter. So for each Job Sin Hunter other than Shikari X you control, I'm just going to call her X for short, X gains 2,000 power. The job, center, the job Sin Hunter forwards other than X you control gain haste, and this forward cannot be blocked by a forward of cost four or more. Here's the really interesting part. When X forms a party with card name Shikari Y and card name Shikari Z and attacks, X deals your opponent three points of damage. That's just for attacking. It doesn't have to get through. So just reading this, anyone who knows anything about this game can see the potential here. We're going to go over the other two cards in a second. Again, this is one of those, will that potential pay off or will this ultimately be too difficult to get to work? But, you know, they've added all this party stuff in this opus. And my buddy Steven and I were always talking about that, you know, they really need a forward that like, because the, only, the problem with party attacking was always that you're trading away all these potential attacks for just one. They're like, so they need a forward that like it does damage for every person in your party. Well, this does even more than that. It does three damage just for attacking. If that attack goes through, that's four points of damage. Like the amount of surprise, you're dead stuff that can come out of this is, is really crazy. And, that, and that's not even counting the other abilities. It gets stronger with the others. Um, it gives them haste so they can attack immediately. And then <laughs> they can't be blocked by four more. Like there is a lot of cool potential here. And it, the question will just be is, will it remain potential or will it bear fruit? Absolutely. So I think I'll, I'll reserve my final judgment until we, we go over all three. So the next one is uh, Shikari Y. Uh, and this is the um, probably the one that you want to play like second or third. And the, the Shikari X is the one that you want to play again, second or third. And the, and the one we're about to talk about, like there's an order I think you want to play them in. Uh, but this one is again, two CP 5k. They're all two CP 5k and they can all get to 9k. If they're all out, they'll get that 2k twice. Uh, and then this one has when jo a job sin hunter other than Shikari enters the field, uh, choose up to three backups and activate them. So, I think there's a case for this one to come down first, but I really like uh, what the next one does. So that's why I'm saying that uh, this one comes down second uh, or third. Uh, I do think that they're actually gonna come down in the opposite order that we're revealing them, um, but you could play this one first for sure. So again, uh, we're getting some win shenanigans here uh, and you obviously want this to go with Chikari X so that you have that big party attack thing. So um, do you wanna go on the next one and then we'll talk about yeah. them all? Yeah. Sounds good. So the next one will be Shikari Z, final of the trio. Again, 2 CP, 5,000 body. Uh, they all have the same opening effect, which is that for every other Sin Hunter, they gain 2,000 power. So like Alex said, if they're all in the field together, they'll be 9K. This one says when a job Sin Hunter other than Z enters your field, you draw a card. So there's the real, you know, how, what order do you play them in? I'm honestly mm -hmm. not sure. Maybe if you have good cards in hand that you don't really need a new card, maybe you go with the backup one so that it's free to keep replaying them. Or maybe if you don't have a good hand and you need some better cards to draw, you put this one down first. Uh, okay, so Alex, go ahead. What, what do you think about all these three together? So because Wind has a card that can protect its forwards called, what's it called again? 
I believe it's called Unsaganashi. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that makes this technically possible. Um, it's interesting that Shikari Y says activate. Um, Oh no, it doesn't. Okay, then we're good. Okay, it says just activate three backups. That's important because you might want to run this uh, with the Earthwind package to get that Star Sybil searching out them. Star Sybil will search them out, uh, and then you have the Moogle 11 could search out the missing piece. Uh, and then you might even have some form of recursion as well. Like, for example, uh, does the new Fenrir specify Earth or? I think it does. I think oh, it, it does. Okay. Work. There's. I think that there's got to be like you've got to have a way to keep them all together. It's gonna be like um, if you had triplets, uh, triplet babies, and they're all crawling off in different directions, and you're like pulling them in, and then they like as soon as you like get look at one of them, like the other two are like scampering off another direction. And uh, this is what me and my twin brother did when we were little. We'd run diversion plays. Um, we right. got it all in film, and. I think it's going to be so hard to keep them together and it's going to need to be, um, it's not going to be as simple as just drawing them all and playing them. As soon as you lose one, you have to replace it. Uh, and that's what the nice thing about the uh, the remnants are in ice is that Kadaj searches the other ones. So it's it's it has that extra security of assembling them, whereas these guys don't have that on their own. So you need to have something else to be searching them or recurring them or doing something to get them back. That's a great point. I hadn't really even considered that. Yeah, if you don't have a way to search these out, you're just relying on luck of the draw to get mm -hmm. them there. And the other thing too is, I love the potential of these cards and they're going to be so fun to play with, but they're also really disruptable. Like if they go into attack, you know, let's say not even the big party attack, because if that party attack goes through, you, you don't even care what happens at that point. You just dealt them three damage. But let's say one of them attacks and it's 9k, but you block. Oh, and then on the stack, I'm going to blow up this other one. So now this one shrunk as well is now only 7k. So now I just two for one you really easily. So they do seem very disruptible, but yeah, they're a really fun combo. It'll it'll be really interesting to see if these end up being more than just like kind of a meme gimmick, like if they end up being really competitive or if it's just, yeah, just for funsies. Again, we definitely need uh, to try it out. Absolutely. Okay, next up, we've got a, a pretty interesting backup. Uh, we've got Chocobo. Uh, this is a two CP win backup standard unit, uh, category Crystal Hunt. When Chocobo enters the field, uh, all the Fords you control can form party with uh, any uh, any element Fords. And then same ability on a Dull, so it's basically paying 1 CP for it. Um, this is going to be a really good utility backup for those party attack decks. It's pretty much going to be mandatory for all of them except for the, the Warrior of Light one. Um, I, I think you'll need this. Um, it's just so situational like you won't use this in too many other decks but for that party attack deck it's going to be important yeah chocobo call <laughs> so the other thing i like about it too though is that it's another card named chocobo which means yeah. that's three more cards you can hit off the back fatty chocobo and it's also a standard unit so like my girlfriend's chocobo deck she has sid hayes in there which can search out standard units so this is just another way to get that. So its job and its name actually appeal to me a lot, even outside of its effect, just because you can use it in those other decks. Does Sid Hayes search standard unit forwards though, or is it uh, any oh, standard? Oh, maybe. maybe it is forward. I, I don't remember. I know it's hmm. standard, but you might be right. Maybe it's only forwards. Either way, chokeable backup, good. All right, yeah. next up. <laughs> Speaking of chocobos, uh, the kind of a human chocobo mix, this is Chocolate. She's a 2CP backup. Her job is chocobo. She's category Woth, World of Final Fantasy. Uh, she has two action abilities. One is you place one item counter on Chocolate. Uh, you just dull her. Dull her, place an item counter on Chocolate. And then you can dull her and remove two item counters from Chocolate to draw one card. You can only use this ability during your turn and only once per turn. This is a job chocobo, so it can be searched out by the legend fat chocobo or chocobo knight or the new opus 11 chocobo that searches a chocobo. So again, definitely going to try it in my chocobo decks just based on that effect alone. Um, as far as the action ability, I won't lie, it reads a little slow. And again, this mm -hmm. is one of those ones that like, I don't understand why it's limited to only your turn and only once per turn. If you had four counters on her, you would need to tap her to draw one and then somehow reactivate her and then tap like if you built up to four, yeah, I don't think yeah. That if would you put the crazy. work in to get the four counters like come on let yeah. it, let <laughs> I, 
I don't. Again, this is one of those ones like it's weird to me that Althea can sit there and mess with their combat math on there, but a card like this is like no, 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 no. Only on your turn and only once. It'd be way too powerful. Like I don't know. However, here's the situation where I actually see this being really good. Like, let's say early. Have you ever had those turns where you put choke a lot, you know, you put down your 2CP back up, and then on your next turn, you don't have a 3CP, so you put down another 2CP, and you've just got that one backup mm -hmm, sitting up there? Yeah. If she's out, oh, I've got nothing else to use this single CP on, boop, put an item counter on her. There are plenty of turns in games where I'm floating a CP just because I just don't have anything to use it on. So in those situations, I think she'd actually be really good because, oh, oh, while I'm waiting, I'll just... And you can you can even wait till your opponent's turn, see if you like need your summon or whatever. And then, oh, I don't... Hey, by the way, on your main phase two, I'm going to just put another item counter on her. So in that scenario, I think she could be decently good, pretty strong. That, that was going to be exactly my point. Uh, and all you wind water players will know how many times you hit that EX burst valve for. It activated all your backups. You didn't need the 3k ping, but you know what you did? You used Riku to make them uh, to to mill one anyway. You just got that Riku in, or you, you had that CP floating. Same thing here. You're going to have those opportunities um, to just... Oh, my backups are reactivated because it was a Bart's on the EX burst. Great, I'm just going to get an item counter, uh, and then later, late in the game, man, I'm going to have to be able to draw. And I think that's why the second ability is a dull, because I think that Wind could naturally drum up these counters, and then it's like, if it was just like an action ability with zero on it, then that might be too powerful. Uh, in, in some activation decks because then all of a sudden it's just like draw a card, draw a card, draw a card if you right. like, yeah. So I think I think that's why they have the disclaimers on like the, the doll there. That's why they have the once per turn thing uh, because I bet there's some sort of reactivation deck that takes advantage of this and could just rack up counters. Um, or the fun way to think about it is is that she's a shopkeeper uh, and that your turn you're in town and then on your opponent's turn you're out in the field and you can't shop out in the field you have to shop when you're in town so that's it that's it that is exactly the reason why i love yeah. that alex okay uh next up we've got diabolos uh two cp wind summon um explorers choose one forward if its power has been increased or decreased break it i want to see um what this like what how this comes out with uh the uh the with the faq um because i don't know what increase or decrease means and like is that just like as simply they have an anna crow out boosting all of the earth fords they're all just breakable i would assume that's how it reads so unless yeah. they put something it's literally if they have to me what it reads is that whatever the base power of that card is as written so if it's a 7k forward if their power becomes anything above seven or anything below it diabolos can outright break it in that case i like this card and i think again uh, it will, you know what whatever we're seeing a lot of in the meta will depend on but i think it's definitely playable it's uh, at first i was comparing it to moomba which reads really well like deal that's an ex burst two cpi summon that deals their power minus 1000 like wow that's so much damage uh, but you have to combo and if you're not prepared to combo with it then you're not gonna be able to do anything uh, so I thought that's what this card was gonna be like but if it's not something you have to combo with it's just something that they have to have out then yeah this this might see play I think this card is incredible. Like, yeah. first of all, I love the artwork. It's really creepy. So any mono deck that's running the Anthem, you've literally said, hey, you can break any of my forwards for two CP, which is crazy. I think, of, you know, Kadaj comes in. I'm going to give myself two CP brave, or, you know, 2,000 power mm -hmm. and brave. Hey, thanks. Now you're vulnerable. Boom, you're gone. Uh, my buddy mentioned this. Imagine attacking with Alua. Shoal, your whole board loses 2,000. Now I can break any of your forwards with this guy. Yikes. Except for Except like, for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. My poor Ida in Scions, like that's what she does. She gets power. The idea of oh, two CP, like it's so cheap. That's mm -hmm. what's crazy to me. Is if if this was like four CP, I could be like, eh, I don't know. That's but it's so cheap. Now, granted, yes, like you know, there are going to be some games maybe. But I mean, this takes out Ritz too because Ritz gets a power buff from March. Like two CP break anything that gets any sort of a buff like that. To me, this reads super strong. Yeah, I I agree. I definitely um it reads better than the first time I, I'd uh, read it for sure. 
Okay, so we talked about in the uh, in the ice video how there's some very good explorers art, just like this Diabolos, and then we said, or I mentioned that there's some very bad explorers art. So, uh, take it away, Travis. Yeah, I, is this was this just like screenshot from the computer, the game? I, I don't know. This this does it looks very out of place. <laughs> like it looks like she wandered into an FFTCG card. Anyway, this is Ninja TCP win backup standard unit, uh, Final Fantasy Explorers multiplayable. There, she has two action abilities, pay a wind and dull her to choose a wind forward and activate it. Or you can pay two wind, dull her, and put her into the break zone, activate all the wind characters you control. So I like this in ninjas for the same reason I liked the samurai. You know, it's it's a job ninja, or it's a card named ninja, so automatically it has some value in ninjas because it works with all ninja shenanigans. Gives edge a token, you know, yada, yada, yada. I, I have to admit, I'm not over the moon about her action abilities. Um... The second one could seem really power. Like you could put her in a mono wind deck and you'd have kind of a cheaper way to get like a Fina effect or a Diabolus effect. And again, you could use this on your opponent's turn because you only would have to leave her up as your only backup and you just pitch a wind card, boom, your entire board comes back to life. So I think that could have some potential. Um, I honestly, it's tough to see her effects having as much power in ninjas. So it's kind of funny because like you'd want her in ninjas for the name ninja. Yeah. But her effect is actually really more suited to like a mono wind deck. So I don't know. She's kind of a weird one to me. So, I mean, people already played this card. It was called Oracle and it was it was the same second ability, except it didn't have the wind caveat. It was out, activate all characters you control. Huh. Uh, and that was very powerful. So it, it saw play in like some niche decks that wanted to do some shenanigans with CP. So this does the same thing, but in wind. So I'm not gonna discount it from being played, uh, but at the same time, then you might just play Oracle unless this first effect is really, really important to you. And it might be, it could be on like, if there's a forward with an important action ability, uh, or it's like a combat trick to get somebody back up to block. But uh, I, don't, I don't think, I don't have high hopes for this card. You know, you literally just gave me this idea. You know what I'm gonna try? I'm gonna try this with that dancer forward we got. Oh to yeah. Tap her, deal 4K, have the ninja reactivator, tap her again, boom, 8K to the board. I don't, I'm not saying it's good, but I'm going to try it. Oh, it's going to happen for sure. Guaranteed. <laughs> Next up, we have Pain. And this is an interesting card, but it's just, it's such a shame. There's such good Pains already in the game. Uh, you know, it's going to take great Pains to like this card. So that's a Travis uh, type joke right there for you guys. Um, okay, so it's a 4 CP win forward at 8k power, drop gull wings, category 10. When Pain enters the field, if you control 3 or more category 10 characters, which is YRP, right, uh, activate all the backups you control. So if you play this in Wind Water and you have Yuna and Riku down, if you play Pain, it's a full backup activation rather than a 3 backup activation. You miss out because you don't draw a card like Pain usually does. Uh, now, if you only have these three uh, category 10 characters and they ping off pain, then you don't activate your backups. So you might want, uh, if it, this was in like a pure 10 deck, then you might want to have that extra security. I just think the other pain's better though, so. By a mile, yeah. like uh, unless, you, unless you're trying to like tap Pinello and then use the other four to put pain out, then reactivate and tap Pinello. W what is the point of this card? I, I don't understand why this has the category 10 characters restriction because again, the other pain was already restricted to Yuna and Riku. So why have this one, which is objectively worse, like like you said, you don't get the card draw, but it's still required to have the 10 characters. Like if anything, this would have made more sense to me if it didn't have the, and it was just like a plain, Hey, this is just a way to get your backups back. But again, we already have that in cards like Vada and Barts. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just don't understand the reasoning behind this card. Like it just seems like such fodder. Well, there is one reason. What's that? They're laying the bricks, the mortar for the eventual Opus one pain banning. Oh, I don't know. I I'll believe that when we see it, because we talked about when Pandemonium came out that, oh, well, maybe that means they're banning Valifor, so you're right. If that card didn't exist, maybe maybe you would turn to this one, but until that <laughs> happens, I don't like it. All right, let's, go let's move on. All right. Uh, next, we have the the with a card I pulled from my very first pack of Opus 12, ladies and gentlemen. In all its full art glory, this is Bart's 4CP 8K forward. 
Job Warrior of Light. He's Category 5 and City of Final Fantasy. Bart's reads, The forwards of cost 1 you control gain haste. When Bart's forms a party and attacks, you may search for one forward of cost 1 and play it onto the field. Love this card. Not only is the artwork probably my favorite art that I've seen yet to date in this TCG, and oh, he looks so good in the full art. He's just got a cool attack. Like, uh, this is the kind of card that incentivizes you to want to party attack. Because, again, the problem with party attacking was that you're technically, it's it's a drawback. You know, you're losing more attackers in order to combine them into one. But because he pulls out a card and puts it right to the field, and then that card can instantly attack, he's just getting that value back. So, again, you want to actively party with him. And we're going to see in this next card a perfect target for him. But just, yeah, he I, I cannot wait to try this card with chocobos or with just with any four of one cost that's it. it's not element restricted like you could do this with the new soul we saw in fire uh he's a great one there's gonna be a lightning one cost we'll see coming up like there's gonna be a lot of fun and potential for a, a one cost shenanigan deck with my man party barts here yeah i'm i'm so happy that they gave him the warrior of light job um that is absolutely makes this card and he works yeah everything you said yeah i'm, I'm super psyched about this guy Okay. Dude, you gotta tell us about his best buddy. Oh, who? Boko. I timed the I timed the click of my of the slide changing with me saying Boko. So there's probably a lot of uh, impressed people watching right now. So Boko is a one CP forward. Who would have guessed? Three K power card named Bart's. You control uh, gains a thousand power in haste. Wow. Uh, and when a party you control deals damage to your opponent, draw one card. Uh, so when you have this and Bart's on the field, your Bart's is a nine K haste. Uh, and then they can swing together and then because uh, they give each other haste and then you can play another one CP and then that has haste and then that can swing in um, and you can just have a lot of fun that way. So uh, definitely a very cool card. Perfect companion. Uh, not uh, not fun to play when you don't have Bart's as happened to my opponent in uh, the pre-release yesterday. They played a one CP Boko standing up to my earth cards and then I played the one CP Borgen who's a 9k and I was like, hey, we're both playing one cp cards you know this is even <laughs> right <laughs> yeah that's a great point can't wait to try this in chocobos with the black chocobo who's a one cp and then when he forms a party he can't be blocked which means that's automatic damage which means you're drawing a card you put off of five backups you can tap four for bards tap one for boko boom they both go in instantly you know you're pulling another one out that feels good or i think chris matiski came up with this idea if you have this and Bart's in your starting hand and you have, uh, I think it's Andoria, the backup that when you have a party that deals damage, literally turn one, you put down that backup, you crap out Bart's and Boko, they go in, they hit your opponent, you draw two cards because Andoria draws you one. Like, oh man, yeah. the, the shenanigans, the potential is just out of this world. Oh, so much fun. Okay, we got to end on a dud, unfortunately. Yeah, so this is Moogle, which I'm wearing the shirt for. Here you go. Moogle's guard. Hmm. Moogle's Guard Trainee from Final Fantasy XIV. So this is Moogle from Crystal Hunt, category Crystal Hunt, job Moogle. It is a 3 CP, 7K win forward. It is an EX burst, and its only effect is damage 3, EX burst. When Moogle, Crystal Hunt, enters the field, draw a card. Oh man, this card, oh, I want to love this card so much because, again, in my girlfriend's Chocobo deck, she plays Chocomog, which can search a card named Moogle this would make sense it's an on curve body but i just i don't understand why they restricted this effect to damage three like would, would that have really been that strong if you could just if it could just do this as its base because it doesn't do anything else other well, than just a body yeah like, or at, it's, least, yeah. at least one or two at least two yeah. at the bare minimum like i just th there's gonna be so many games if you try this card it's gonna hit and damage one or two You're like cool that did nothing like I don't know. Like, there's just so many other cards in this game now that give you value. Maybe this came out in like Opus Three or something. That would be crazy strong. But nowadays, that just seems so. Like, I just hate bursts like this. That, by the way, uh, there's a potential you could hit this and it'll do absolutely nothing. Yeah, I, I think uh, the one place you might see it is like some sort of damage self-based or self-damage based deck. If like a Fuso Ya yeah, or like. We have so many cards that self damage now. Then, if you can reliably get yourself to three damage and are playing wind, then maybe there's a case for him. Um, but I mean, he definitely had to have a condition because otherwise, he's he's like a 
um, like a searcher or a pain or anything like that that has a fully on curve. So uh, I think I think you either have to remove the on curve part uh, and put them down to like a 5k or like something like that to get rid of the damage three or or keep the damage on and and maybe. But you're right, it could have been damage one or two or something. I don't know. Like I think or there give was him another ability, so he doesn't just have to rely on that. Yeah, exactly. All right, I know it's it's kind of depressing to end on that, but uh, you know that's that's all we can give you because uh, they're a little bit shorter. But uh, don't worry, we are going to address the multi-element cards uh, later on in our final video for the set, as well as the dark and light card uh, cards. Uh, so look forward to those. But uh, before we go, as a whole, Travis, what do you think about wind? I think there's some really exciting stuff in here. Uh, the Enkidu, the Althea, um, the, the Shikari brothers, sisters, whatever they are. I've never played Eleven that much, sorry. Um, I, I'm kind of excited about the Chocobos. I think Diabolos looks really strong, Party Barts. For the most part, I think Wynn's got some really good stuff. It's got a few duds like usual, but I think it has a lot of fun things to play with. And I got to say, I'm really liking the way the wind is blowing. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Uh, fantastic uh, uh, film too. Um, if you've seen it now, I, I just had this thought that we're going to probably have very similar takes on every single element because there's uh, a reduced amount of cards in each element. So yeah. there's just so many less chances for there to be standout cards. Um, so with that said, until we get to multi elements, I don't think what we'll probably have to do like an eighth video. That's like, how does like grading each will give a grade to each element or something. Cause yeah, it's the same, like a couple of pow powerful cards, a couple of right. mysterious cards, a couple of crappy cards. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to take off and uh, probably film one more video. So uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for stopping by. Don't blow away. <laughs> Every time.